That's right, we're switching from the i7-13700K system, which we all know and love, to AMD Ryzen. But would I regret my decision? No, I, I'm, I don't think so. To be honest, the main reason why I'm swapping is because I just felt like I wanted a bit of a change. I've been rocking the 13700K for the past two years now and it's edited every single video and photo you've seen across my social media channels and it's been an absolute workhorse. But when I found out that Intel's QuickSync doesn't support my Sony's video codec, I thought maybe now is the time to switch to AMD and just see what it's like. I haven't used an AMD CPU in my main PC since the 3950X all the way back in around 2022, that sort of era. So a lot's changed since then. In place of the old 13700K, I've opted for the Ryzen 9 7900X. This is probably the best value workstation chip on AM5 right now, as it only costs around 100 and not a hundred, I wish it was that cheap. Around £329 is what I paid for it. And this should net us similar performance to the 13700K while consuming substantially less power. And it's also on the AM5 platform, which is a vastly better than LGA 1700. And we get quite a bit of socket support as well. So if I wanted to upgrade to 10,000 series or 11,000 series or whatever AMD you want to call it, I can do that with a simple BIOS update. Anyways, speaking of AM5, the motherboard we've gone for is the MSI X870E Tomahawk. MSI did send out this motherboard and I do get to keep it, but they didn't sponsor this video. And we overviewed this board in a video, which you can watch after this one. However, it's got all the features I would need and then some more, but it does have one slight problem which I'll be going over towards the end of the video. Anyways, I think it suits the theme of this PC much better than what the old Z690 Force Wi-Fi did, purely because it's an all black motherboard compared to this silver of the previous one. As we're building a workstation here, we're going to need 64 gigabytes of DDR5 memory and KingBank has come in clutch with their 6,000 mega transfers per second CL36 DDR5 memory in two sticks. That is very important with AMD Ryzen as I didn't really want to push it with four sticks as we know how temperamental the memory controllers can be on this platform. Anyways, these KingBank modules are very sleek looking. They've got no RGB, which is something I specifically wanted as one, they're going to be under the CPU caller anyways, and I didn't really want RGB on them. So it just looks a bit more minimal. And speaking of that, they've got a brushed aluminium finish, which looks very good in this system. I really like how they turned out. What isn't minimal is the boot drive we're using. The Crucial T705 is just stupidly fast. It's a Gen 5 NVMe and you're getting speeds of just under 15 gigabytes read and write. This is supremely overkill for basically every single user out there even if you're building a video editing workstation. However, I had it lying around and I wanted to put it to some use, but it's not the only drive we're using as we've got one for our projects, which is an MSI Sp Spatium, Spatium, I believe it's called. This wasn't sponsored or anything. I, I bought this drive quite a while ago. And we've got an SK Hynix P41 for our game storage as well. And not to mention a two terabyte hard drive, which I use for archival. But to keep our CPU cool, we're going to be using some Thermal Grizzly Duranaut. They're like the unofficial Thermal Paste sponsor of Pro Yam Yam PC at the minute, but for good reason. This Thermal Paste is the real deal. It doesn't really suffer from pump out like other Thermal Paste, which I've been using in the past, which have been annoying me with my RTX 3080. This means I won't need to be changing my Thermal Paste anytime soon. But to squish that onto the CPU, we're going to be using the Noctua NHD 15 G2. This is like the best air cooler on the market right now, and it really ties into our Noctua theme. And most importantly, it's going to cool the 7900X very well. It did a great job with the 13700K, so nothing's to say that it's going to be doing a bad job for the 7900X either. And because of the southern location of the CCDs on AM5 CPUs, Noct2 has also included an offset which drops the cooler down by seven millimeters so you can more effectively cool your processor, W noct -er. And the platform is going into the exact same case which we were using before. The Antec Flux is absolutely brilliant. It's got great airflow, 
it's got a very good build quality and I also really like the way the side panel goes on as well. It's like the best method of putting on a side panel. Anyways, other than that, it really suits our theme perfectly with the wooden aesthetic on the front panel. It really ties it in with the Noctua brand and beige fans that we're using. So this PC is going to be performing well and looking great too. And thanks to the 50 series being an absolute joke of a generation, the RTX 3080 Founders Edition is staying in my PC for the foreseeable future. Gaming performance, I don't feel like it needs any adjustment. It's still performing totally fine. Maybe the 10 gigabytes of VRAM is very cutting it close that doesn't make sense it's it's barely enough put it that way and its editing performance is perfectly fine i've got no problems with it timeline performance encoding performance is still great even on the 3080 and nothing's going to change with our case fan layout it's performing great acoustically even with the theme as well it looks great i think and airflow wise everything's staying cool in there so there's no need to change this it's always a massive weight off your chest when you see your PC boot for the first time without any problems. I was expecting, I don't know, I might need to clear the CMOS or something because I used this board with different RAM before, but everything booted up just fine. And before we install Windows, I think it's a good time to update the BIOS. The revision that I had was the original one from December, so updating this to the newest one, improves some memory compatibility and stuff like that, you may as well do it while you don't have an operating system installed. And speaking of which, we're installing Windows 11 24H2. This is kind of a controversial install of Windows because it's just been causing some problems on some people's devices. However, it comes with a very important feature, and that is the improved branch production for AMD Ryzen processors and what this will do is net us some more performance particularly in games and productivity apps but it's nothing really to write home about so if there's any problems I'll just go back to 23 H2 or anything but so far it's been pretty good and speaking of stability instead of going with the game ready drivers I've gone with the Nvidia Studio drivers despite playing games on this system I still think this is the best driver version to go with purely because I don't play any new games and that is the only major benefit that I could see online with the game ready drivers. You get support for day one games. Anyways, after the OS install, going back into the BIOS, enable XMP, you don't want to forget that because it's literally free performance and thankfully XMP works fine even with the dual rank modules that we're using. And then a very underrated feature is adjusting your fan curves. We've got fancy not to fans in here, so we're going to want them optimized. Don't keep these out of the default out of the box because it's absolutely terrible. Especially with your case fans, change the sensor from these from the CPU to the system. And what this will prevent is the constant fluctuations, but when it's set to system, it's just stable all the time. And the airflow is still great, even with a relatively hot graphics card like the 3080. After that, it's time to go back into Windows, install the rest of the drivers and install all the applications and we have a fully fleshed out workstation. And one thing I can say for sure is this PC is incredibly snappy. I know there were a few rumours on the grapevine that AMD Ryzen CPUs were a bit snappier than Intel processors, particularly when you absolutely bombard the PC with actions. And this might be something I'm witnessing right now. If you wanted to know the science about it, it's something to do with the input and output controller on Intel processors. It's just not as good or its locations too far away from the cores or something like that. But one thing I can say is it could be attributed to a fresh Windows install as this does make things very snappy. But I'm just happy the system is very responsive. Also what helps with this snappiness is the tuning of our 7900X. I've gone into the PBO negative curve optimizer and put minus 25 on that. So I've got a pretty good sample. Like I really won out with the silicon lottery. Anyways, I've capped out the wattage to 150 watts. So it's not going to be using any more than that. And this is 20 down from the TDP. So it's going to be very efficient. And I've set the thermal throttle limit to 85, which to be honest, it shouldn't be reaching anywhere near that anyways. And what this results in is a processor which slightly outperforms the 13700K in Cinebench while using substantially less power. As we said, it's capped at 150 watts, but the 13700K caps out at 253. And this results in 
obviously far less power being consumed and far less heat as well as the 13700k will happily get up to the high 90s this will stay in the mid to high 70s so there's absolutely no problems there at all. And we even see the improvements in some real world workloads like Lightroom Classic, a feature I use all the time in there is the spot healing tool as I wanna get dust off of all the products and stuff like that. Here the 13700K really struggled. Every time I went to apply it, so I went to get rid of like a piece of dust or something, it would just have like half a second or a second just to think about it and then it would do it. But with the 7900X, it's way snappier and it's much quicker. Yet again, this could be down to a fresh operating system install or just the better single core performance of the 7900X. But what I can say is this is not placebo. The improvements are very real here. And as for video editing, the 7900X hasn't really been put through its paces yet. But for editing some short form content, it's been totally fine and timeline performance has been very smooth there was one slight issue in premiere pro actually where it defaulted to amd's opencl where it was using the integrated graphics of this but i just changed this to cuda which uses the nvidia graphics card and it's been totally fine ever since that but as you're watching this video right now odd wager it got on pretty decently and as i get into more complex video editing projects i'll give you a lot of an update on how it's getting on but i'd be honest i'd think it'd get on pretty decently oh and speaking of the rtx 3080 as well keeping with that gaming performance is still it's fine it's exactly the same as the 13700k i haven't noticed anything different especially in the game i play the most which is minecraft so that's great to see and the 7900x won't be saturated by 3080 so if i wanted to get a more powerful graphics card like a 5080 if they ever come into stock at msrp I'd wager it'd fit quite well with this processor. However, this is all well and good, but there is one issue and it's not to do with the processor. The onboard LAN of the X870E Tomahawk is kind of broken. The drivers install and Windows recognizes that it's there without an error code 43, so the LAN chip's working, but whenever I plug an ethernet into it, it's just not recognizing a network at all. I've tried a different cable, a different port on my switch, and I've even tried rebooting the router and reinstalling the drivers to no avail. But the one thing that does work is the Wi-Fi 7 and it works really well to the point where I'm getting the exact same uploads and downloads compared to wired, compared to like the, the Z690 force Wi-Fi that is. And yeah, I'm probably getting a slightly more latency, but I don't really play competitive games, so I don't really care. But it's just a bit annoying that the LAN's not working right now, but I do suspect this to be a driver problem. So despite that very small, slightly annoying problem, it's great to be back with Team Red. There was nothing wrong with the 13700K and in fact to prove it, it's going into my testing PC where I can virtually test every single graphics card with basically no bottlenecks for the most part. And speaking of which, if you wanted to see how the RTX 3080 gets on in some gaming tests, you can watch in a video up there. With that being said, I'll catch you in the next one.